Welcome back aliens, my name is Devin Reddy. In the last video, we have seen how do we create a simple Spring Boot application using JPA and H2. Now let's go ahead with the example. So whatever we have done till now is very simple. We are simply adding this alien data and the moment you click on submit, the data goes to a controller. A controller will fetch those values in the alien object and the same data will be saved in the database with the help of this alien repo. Now, thanks to Spring Data JPA, we have this concept of creating the interface and simply extending a code repository. Normally, what we do in databases is we create a separate class and that class will have certain methods. And normally what you do is code operations, right? Create, update, delete and read. So we can do all those things. In fact, you don't have to write the code. Spring Data JPA makes this thing easy for you and says, hey, you don't have to worry about that. We have implemented all the code operations. That's awesome, right? In fact, we have done only one thing till now, which is doing save. Now there are certain questions which you need to answer. Now, if you can see this example, I have not used any service layer. So we have a controller and controller is interacting with repo. So that's not how we write an application in the enterprise scenario, right? What we do is we also have a service layer. Now, why do we need a service layer is because as a controller, we are always not sure that data is coming from database. Sometime data is coming from the network. Sometime data is coming from the input provided from the user. So we need to process something and that processing should be done in the service layer. In case if data is coming from the repository, then service layer will interact with it with repository. So that's how we build application. But here, since we just wanted to explain about Spring Data JPA, I, I directly went with the repo. Okay, so once we got a repo here and once we are able to say add, what if I want to fetch? In fact, before the, before the video, I just made some changes from the last example. The first change is in the alien class, I have added one more field, which is tech. So we had a ID, we had a name. Now I have also added tech and I have added five values. So if I go to data.sql, you can see I've added five values instead of one. I have run this application once. So if, if I go to my console, uh, the H2 console, and if I say select star from alien, and if I run this code, you can see we got five records because I want to do some extra stuff, right? If I go back to my code, wh what else I want to do is I want to fetch the alien. So in the last example, I've just added the alien, right? What if I want to fetch an alien? Uh, it's very easy. You can create separate form for that. Of course, we should be doing in, uh, we should be dividing this line by something, but uh, I'm not that good with designing, so let's ignore that. So I would say get alien. So I want to fetch an alien based on the AID. So I will not be doing any of this stuff. So simply AID. So the moment you click on, the moment you type in AID and say submit, it it should return an AID. Now, unfortunately, we don't have any controller which will accept that request. So I will copy this, and I would say this is uh, get alien, and the method will also be get alien. And this time I'm not expecting. Uh, alien of course I'm expecting a string which is called as a I D and if you want to map this I will be using a request param so request param is something using which you can you know uh, fetch the value from the client okay so once I got the value uh, instead of saying save I will be saying okay now what what is what's the method I want to use here and where do I store it okay that's a question uh, in fact, we have one more question about home.jsp, which page I will be using now. I want to show records, right? So of course, I need a separate JSP page. And that's the thing with, you know, with the, the view technologies. For everything, if you want to show something to the user, you need to create a separate JSP. Let me just do that. I would say this is show alien.jsp. And this need to be where? Uh, so show alien.jsp should be a part of web app. Okay, this seems good. And in this show alien, I want to display the data about alien. So what I will do is I will simply say dollar and I want to send an alien. So this is what I'll be sending from the controller. Okay, so that's that's good. So here I would be saying alien or uh, not alien. I would say show alien dot dot JSP. So this is what I want to return. But with the view, I also want to send a data, right? So as we have discussed in the earlier videos, we can use a model and view here because it will make more sense. So I will be saying model and view MV is equal to new model and view. For, of course, we need to import the package. And in the in the 
constructor itself i will specify the view name this is one way you can also set the view name or you can use a constructor to do that and instead of returning a string i will return mv but in this mv i also need so with this mv with this view i also want to return the data but from nowhere i have i'm fetching data right now think about this when i say get alien by passing an aid what do you think how many aliens will get one or many of course one right because when you mention primary key you will be getting only one id or one object so you will be storing that in an alien so you will say alien alien is equal to repo dot now what should be the method name because save will save it let if, if you go down with that you can also check exist by id we can check because this will return boolean if the object present there but i don't want to check i want to fetch so it should be this method which is find by id so find by id in which you have to mention the a id which you want to fetch that's it now once you get this a id find by id will give you the object oh okay there's there's one issue here the method find by id is the code repository is not applicable for the argument string oh i'm not returning is it a string oh my bad uh, a id is basically an integer right of course because we it's an integer so how can you write string my bad and once we have done that it is still giving you an error it says cannot convert from optional alien to alien now there's a beauty about java 8 you know java 8 gives you this option of uh, giving keeping it keep, keeping it optional just to handle the null values we are we we normally use optional so we have two choice here one you can make this optional as we can do in java 8 or at the end you can say maybe uh, or else you can return null okay not a good practice but at, for this example it will work normally we should be using uh, alien object or any blank alien object or you can you should be using null in fact uh, we can also say new alien that will make more sense right why to play with nulls anyway yeah so now once we have this uh, once we have this values we need to add that in mv so i would say mv dot add object and I, I will add alien that's it it's that simple this should work how do i verify this so let's re re the, relaunch the application and go back to the browser okay not in the h2 of course i want to go to the page if I refresh, you can see we have this form, a separate form here, which is asking for the AID. I would say 101 and click on submit. Oh, it's working. Can you see that we got 101, Naveen and tech is Java. Now, same thing can be done for 104. Uh, click on submit. You can see we got 104, Komal and Java. Of course, not everyone is in Java. If I say 105, click on submit. You can see we got uh, Rafik and Android. Now, the thing is, what if I say 106? Now, 106 is not available in database, right? And that's why if you have returned null in else part, it will, it will give you exception. But here, if I click on submit, you will say you will get blank object because we are returning a new object. Uh, what you can also do is you can create a fake object with fake data and you can return that. That's fine. You can do that. So once we have done with this, this is how you can fetch values. Can you update? Yes, you can. So that will be your assignment, you know. Uh, so create multiple methods in fact create multiple forms here for updating as well and create multiple controllers so we have let's say update alien delete alien and if you're thinking do we have a methods for that of course we have example if i say repo dot uh, we have a method called as delete uh, we have a method called delete all in fact we should be having option for update now in case of update what you will do is you will delete the old record and you will save the new record or I guess even save will do it for you. So try it out. Uh, that will be your assignment because not everything I want to spoon feed you. Uh, so try it out uh, let, because you will learn by experience. So that will be your assignment. Now see all these things looks good, right? But I just have one concern. Can we do delete and update? Of course we can. And that will be the assignment, you know, how, to, uh, how do we use delete and how do we use update? But I just have one query here. What if you have a complex query? because this code repository which you have here it provides you all the basic code features what if you want to do something extra something very different can we write our own methods uh, and the answer is yes you know uh, we can write our own methods example let's say uh, if you are if you want to fetch if you want to find elements or if you want to find aliens based on so whoever has a later in, in their name can we do those complex queries uh, and the answer is yes. Again, how to do that, that we'll see in the next video. So I hope you are enjoying my videos. Let me know in the comment section and do click on the like button if you're enjoying it. Thank you so much for watching everyone.